Hi guys, in this example, we have two objects of equal mass, 0.1 grams, that carry identical charges and are suspended by two threads of equal length. So the key term here is the system is at equilibrium and they're saying that in this position, they, um, they, are, they position themselves as shown in the, in the figure below. They are being asked to find the charges on either ball. So the diagram here uh, denotes or shows uh, the equilibrium position. So how do we approach it? Well, here, the fact that they're saying um, equilibrium, it means that we have to recall what we did under, under static equilibrium. So you have to, to remember those, uh, those ideas. Now, for starters, since these are charged particles, we are seeing that they are kind of repelling each other here. So it's like... This object here, if we just focus on this, if we label this as one, it's like it experiences a push away. So this force, of course, has to be the electrostatic force pushing it away from the other, the other charge. So what this kind of shows is that these two obviously have um, like charges. We don't know if it's negative or if it's positive, but all we know is that they have like charges. So to account for this electrostatic force, what we have to uh, keep in mind is Coulomb's law. And from Coulomb's law, we have the electrostatic force. The magnitude of the electrostatic force is equal to the constant and then the product of the two charges, Q1 and Q2, then divided by the square of the distance between them. So from here, the electrostatic force, if we, we want to find the, the charges or the charge Q1 and Q2, so all we know is that the question says they carry similar uh, a similar charge so q1 has to be equal to q2 so let's just take this as q our expression then becomes the electrostatic force will now be equal to the constant q for q1 multiplying q for q2 divided by the square of the distance between them this quickly becomes fe equal to k the square divided by r squared we're looking for Q here, the charge, so we can make it the subject of the formula. We cross multiply here. We have R squared, the electrostatic force, K and Q squared. So this becomes R squared, Fe over K equal to Q squared, so that the charge on one will be equal to the square root of the distance between them, the electrostatic force divided by that constant. So what this tells us is that to find the charge on either, either ball here, we need to know what the constant is, the distance between them, and the electrostatic force between them. Well, for the electrostatic force between them, from here, to find the charge Q, we first have to find the electrostatic force Fe. So how do we do that? Well, we have to take advantage of the fact that the system is in equilibrium. If it is in equilibrium, it means that from the laws of equilibrium, the sum of all the forces has to be equal to zero, the vector sum that is. So for this charge, let's picture just one of them. So for this, if we just picture this part, what are the forces present? Well, we have the tension acting through the string. We have the electrostatic force pushing it away from the other, and apart from that, we have the weight of this object dragging it downwards, mg. So, and the angle given here is 60 degrees. So from here, we can split this tension into its components. And if we do that, remember your vectors, tension is going to have two components. One component will be horizontal, and this part will be given by T cos 60. The other component will be going vertically upwards, and this component will be given by T sine 60. So in this case, we then realize that this object experiences altogether a tension going to the right, T cos 60, a tension going upwards, T sine 60, and then the weight going downwards, mg, and the electrostatic force going to the left. So, by the first condition of equilibrium, the net force has to be equal to zero. We start with the forces in the x-axis. If we did that, equal to zero, 
we have two forces in the x-axis t equals 60 going to the right so it will be positive and then the electrostatic force going to the left so it's negative this has to be equal to zero from here we end up with equation one the electrostatic force has to be equal to the tension multiplying cos 60 so let's keep this as equation one next up sum of forces in the y-axis equal to zero again the first condition of equilibrium from here there are two forces in the y-axis t sine 60 going up mg going down so going up t sine 60 going down mg has to be equal to zero from here we have t sine 60 equal to mg so that t is just equal to mg over sine 60. In the question we're given what m1 is, this is 0 0.1 grams. We need this in kgs, so it becomes 0 0.001 kgs. And then we already know what g is. We're taking g as 9.8. So we can substitute and t will be equal to the mass g divided by sine 60. If we do the math here, T will come out as 0 0.001131606 newtons. With this value of T, we can then get this and plug it into our equation for Fe. So we can plug it here where we have T. So if we did that, the electrostatic force Fe, which was T, cos 60. So where there's T, we'll put this value of T there. So this becomes 0 0.00113, then multiplying cos 60. So if we do the math here, we get 0 0.565803 newtons. So we now have the value of Fe, the electrostatic force. Remember what we're looking for, the charge on either, either ball. So we came up with an expression for that charge, and it was given by this. Now we have everything we need. This is a constant. This is given. And we have just found what the electrostatic force is. So from here, we can perform the substitution. And if we did that, the charge Q on either, either ball becomes equal to the square root of the distance between them, 0 0.4 that was given as 40 centimeters in meters becomes 0.4 squared multiplying the electrostatic force then divided by the constant k then all these under the square root so if we do the math this comes out as 0 0.1 Columns. So this can be written as 0 0.10 coulombs. Uh, not coulombs now. So 0 .0, 0 0.10 micro coulombs. Yes. So this becomes the charge on either, either ball. All right, guys. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you're able to see how we can use Coulomb's law in relation to the other to the other concepts that we've done. So don't restrict yourself to just one concept. Be able to combine ideas when you find questions. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video.